League of Legends. Playing League of Legends will either make you feel like your heart is about to explode from the thrill of a close game, or like you want to unalive yourself while in a not so close game where you're losing. For those of you who live under a malfight, League of Legends is a MOBA developed by the small indie company known as Rito Games. The story of League of Legends is as follows. There's a world called Runeterra. On this world are many, many, many different factions, each with their own main cities, culture, lore, and champions. When these factions would go to war, their armies and champions would battle, and due to the mass destruction caused by the powerful magic used and nature of the wars, the physical and political stability of the world started to be threatened. So fearing that their world would be destroyed by the magic used in these wars, the powers that be decided that from now on, conflicts would be decided by groups of champions in the Summoner's Rift, which is essentially a gigantic magical battlefield which is able to be magically healed of any destruction visited upon it by the battling champions. The main focus of the game definitely is not the story, as all you do is fight other players in a big-ass arena. There is, however, backstories for every champion that you can read in their bio. There's books you can rub your eyes on, and of course, the arcane TV series that all go into detail about the world of Runeterra. You have until the rocket hits the target dummy to subscribe. Did you do it? Oh, you're dead. For a 15-year-old MOBA, League of Legends looks great. Throughout the years, Rito has continually updated the graphics of League of Legends through visually reworking the maps and champions to modernize their look. Nobody plays League of Legends for the graphics, though, let's be honest. You play League of Legends because you get a little dopamine hit when you make a sick play, and you also hate yourself. Here's the system requirements. You'll notice that you can likely run League of Legends on a TI-30 calculator. Each match of League of Legends flows like this. Select your preferred pronouns and queue up. Then, wait for a guesstimated amount of time and allow your brain to be drowned in endorphins every time you hear the iconic cue pop noise like a good little dog conditioned to drool at the sound of a bell. Sit in the lobby with a bunch of other nerds, ban a champion, pick your champion, pick your summoner spells and runes, then casually shit-talk your teammates so you guys get off to a great start. Then boom, load screen. It finally finishes after the baked potato your teammate is using as a computer loads. You spawn in, buy your items, and then go to battle on the rift for glory, treasure, elo, and the right to touch some grass. Once on the rift, unless you're the jungler, you go to your lane and epically battle your opponent by sitting across from them in the lane you choose, and right-click minions to auto-attack them when their little HP bar gets small enough to get the gold. Do that a bunch, either quickly or slowly, depending on your matchup, all the while trying to hit your enemy with abilities, dodging their abilities, while them have to pay attention to the other lanes so nobody roams and tries to surprise butt sex you, rotating to objectives like dragon or bear and paying attention to if your jungler is invaded, keeping track of enemy summoner spells, thinking about what items to buy, and you get it. There's a lot to keep track of and the game is hard to get into for new players. Anyways, the goal is to destroy the enemy nexus, so destroy all the towers in your way and blow that thing up. The main map is Summoner's Rift, which is 5v5 and comes in four flavors, Quick Play, Unranked Draft, Ranked Solo Duo, and Ranked Flex. The Howling Abyss is where you play ARAM, which is always available. It's a 5v5 one lane map where everyone gets random champions. Teamfight Tactics is a totally different game, so I'm not going to talk about that. Then aside from that, there's the rotating game mode, which changes between a bunch of different game modes throughout the year. Currently, Arena 2v2 is available, which is a 2v2v2v2v2v2v2 tournament. Each map has their own set of items, which all have different stats, passives, and active abilities. Pretty much the most important thing in the game is gold. You buy items with gold, you get gold by killing jungle camps, minions, objectives, and enemy champions. Enemy champions who are performing poorly will be worth less gold, whereas enemy champions on a kill streak gain a shutdown and can provide even more gold. Gold is important because you use it to buy items. Break the stride of Matthew Wilder or the enemy champions with Stride Breaker. It gives some attack damage, HP, attack speed, damages, and slows enemies in a circle around you and some other good stuff. And there's 107 items that are variations of this just in Summoner's Rift alone. So good luck. <laughs> yup, <laughs> yup. Summoner's Rift is home to many a creature, troll, and feeder. Firstly, you have the jungle monsters called camps. Each respective team's side of the map has their own jungle and camps, which are mirrored from one team's side to the other. Camps are worth gold and XP to kill, grant HP upon killing blow if you have the jungle item, and two of them provide buffs. Then there's the Void Grubs, the Rift Herald, and Baron, which all spawn at different times at the top circular pit thing. They all provide something that the enemy team does not want you to have, so take them when it's safe to do so. There's the Scuttle Crabs, which patrol both rivers. You hit them, they scuttle their little ass away, you finally kill them, and they leave a zone that grants your team vision and moves speed. If you like slaying dragons, I have good news for you. There's six base types of dragons, which provide the team that slays them with a buff, such as more attack damage and ability power. Once a team gets the last hit and kills four dragons, they get the dragon soul buff, which provides one of six big buffs, such as the fire dragon soul. 
which makes your auto attacks and abilities deal a big AoE burst on hit every 3 seconds. And finally, there's the Elder Dragon, which is like the normal dragons, but older, and gives you a buff that burns the enemy as well as causing damage to execute them below a certain HP threshold. Yeah, bye bye team fights. Aside from the mindless AI that stand around in the jungle waiting for you to come kill them, you of course have the mindless AI that stand in the lanes and wait for the enemy to come kill them. I'm talking about your teammates. This is supposed to be the enemy variety section, but I put teammates here because my god, the people in this game can be toxic or just so bad that they might as well be on the other team. Then, of course, you have your actual enemies, which are the enemy champions. They are approximately 168 champions in League of Legends, all meticulously balanced by the balance team with a combined 200 years of balancing experience. Some of them are big and badass, like Darius, who has a giant axe. Like almost every other champion, Darius has three basic abilities, a passive and an ultimate. His passive causes enemies struck specifically by the blade of his axe to gain a stack of bleed up to five. His Q makes him slash in a circle around him, dealing extra damage and healing himself when he hits enemies with the blade of his axe. His W makes his next auto attack slow and deal extra damage. His E yanks units to him and his R causes him to attempt to bisect an enemy champion with his axe. The more bleed stacks on the enemy, the more damage it does. Then some champions are just meme lords like Shaco, who puts down invisible jack in the boxes that fear and damage your enemy when they're close by. He can make a controllable clone of himself that explodes and leaves jack in the boxes on the ground and he throws a targeted almost unmissable dagger that deals more damage to low HP enemies and the icing on the cake is you can turn invisible and blink a short distance. So I'll just let you imagine some of the ridiculously infuriating scenarios that this character can create with people chasing him through fields of jack-in-the-boxes only to realize it's his clone and getting one shot from stealth. He's my favorite character. Lots of champions have crazy high skill ceilings and secret mechanics that aren't in the tooltip. For example, Shaco's ultimate will teleport to you if you get too far away. So if you stealth into the enemy team and position your clone correctly, you can make it teleport to you while in the middle of the enemy team, which will likely scare them. Cause them to one-shot it and lose half their HP, if you built AP, while you casually walk away and allow your team to clean up. The game is strictly PvP, but you can play co-op versus bots if you're a noob or something. League of Legends is potentially the most toxic gaming environment in existence and it is very easy to ruin a game for everyone in it if somebody hurts your widow feelings. I've encountered people in the game with tolerances for minor inconvenience lower than the Mariana Trench. If you so much as take a laner's minion as a jungler after a gank where you get the kill, there is a chance that the laner may try to follow you around and take your camps because they're on a 7 game loss streak. They're just salty as hell. They can just AFK or they might decide to int. Short for intentionally feed, they'll just walk in front of the enemy and let the enemy kill them to make them stronger and make the game harder for the Inters team. Being one of the most toxic games in the world, some truly horrid things that would make the likes of Hitler and Mao blush have been said in game chat. There's racism, homophobia, calls for self-unaliving, calls for unaliving of entire families, etc, etc. Aside from the legitimate racism, homophobia, etc, I actually enjoyed the ridiculously brutal and over-the-top insults people would throw at each other sometimes. Y'all thought the cod lobbies were vicious? Yeah, it's like, hey, Ma, I played with my dick today! Nobody cares, it's not a feat! League of Legends is truly in a league of its own when it comes to community toxicity. There is no pay to win in League of Legends, but there is, however, cosmetics. Oh, so many cosmetics. You got ward skins, champion skins, different color schemes for many of the skins, emotes, etc, etc. You can get a lot of it for free in your shop, which has you click buttons and jump through hoops to unlock some of the stuff. Rito pumps out cosmetics at a truly astonishing rate. They even have designer skins, which is basically like having a Gucci bag IRL. And you can get the skin for the low, low price of a car payment when you finance a mid-sized sedan, just $500. Yeah, it's kind of absurd. The only people buying these skins are trust fund babies, streamers, and kids that stole their mommy's credit card. When I play League of Legends, I don't run into many glitches or bugs. The only one I really encounter is when you click too many times in the screen before the loading screen, the game crashes and you have to restart it. Other than that, there's bugs every so often when they add new champions or items, but they usually squash those pretty fast. To recap, League of Legends is one of the highest skill floor video games you could possibly play. To actually get to a point where you're comfortable in every game of League that you play and know what every champion does and what you should be doing all the time, you need to put serious hours into the game, at minimum 500. But you're going to be going against many veterans of the game with 3k plus hours who can tell you every ability of every champion. Once you get into it though, holy hell can it be addicting. Once it all comes together and you have enough knowledge to semi I consistently make them spicy highlight reel plays to save them games 50 minutes in, it's a feeling like no other in gaming. The skill expression is insane, and it's not just mechanical skill with dodging stuff and hitting crazy skill shots either. It's game knowledge, map awareness, minion management, split pushing, side lanes at the best possible times, knowing when to take objectives, getting good at last hitting minions. There's just so many different aspects that you need to get good at to get really into this game.
on our patented 0 to 1 scale, we rate this game a .93 out of 1. I cannot rate it lower. I have like 3,000 hours in this game, and it's one of my go-tos whenever I'm gaming alone. As much as other fans and I will shit-talk this game, when it comes down to it, we love it. The game is just good. The longevity and the size of the player base reflects that. The only downside is the toxicity of the community. It's mostly a non-issue because if you're someone with more than 4 IQ points, you'll just shut the hell up and mute chat when you're seriously trying to climb in ranked. That, however, cannot save you from the people who will literally just grief the game by intentionally feeding and ruining it for everyone. You don't get these types of people super often, but they'll pop up occasionally, and it's really annoying, especially when it's a close game. If you enjoyed this video, please, one-shot that sub button, intentionally feed that algorithm by leaving us a comment and liking the video. Thank you, Good night. and remember to tip Spider-Man if he ever saves you by stopping your train from barreling off a ledge due to destroyed train tracks. It's rough out here, even for superheroes.